There's a lot of boring shit in the world. I don't need to be boring. Other people can be boring. I want to do something that really affects people in a positive way, and I don't want to be boring doing it. I put out the records I put out. I play the kind of shows I play because, like, it's what's in my heart, straight up. Ultimately, like, I'm just trying to, like, make something that in its small way is bigger than myself, or it's bigger than, like, what somebody wants me to be. And it's been very difficult. It's always this, like, kind of internal struggle of, like, why am I doing this? What am I doing? It's stupid. I'm a failure. I'm a loser, you know? And I just keep doing it, you know? It's just, like, what I do. It's, it's my life. So... I do it. I haven't been back here in probably like 13 years, maybe. That back house? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's where a lot of very early shows happened, you know, the barely legal house. I remember uh, playing a show with Japantha where they actually played in the kitchen of that house straight up in the kitchen and kids were like crowd surfing off of the kitchen counter. And you know, I've played a lot of punk houses, toured a lot over the years, but there's something about this place that was just completely like lawless to me or something. I don't know. It's just not a real like feeling that you can like replicate as you get older. Continuing to play music and perform is some, somehow attempting to continue some kind of connection with that feeling that was transmitted to me as a kid. I think that, you know, finding music that in a major way at 13 or 14, it gave my life some sort of like meaning. More than anything that changed, changed my life as far as rap music was listening to the uh, WMSC, the college station, and listening to the uh, underground rap show on that station, the Late Night Hype Show. 91.7 FM, WMSC in a lock. In a lock. Baby. It is to the streets. Late night hype, late night hype. You know, that show, it would be like, uh, it was three hours, and it would be like two hours of new kind of underground rap, and this was the late 90s, so that scene was very uh, vibrant at the moment. Then the last hour would just be old school, or the last hour and a half, and you know, so uh, in a way, like, you kind of got all this stuff, and I got this education about rap music through listening to that show. It really just, like, kind of opened up my world to music in a way that if I was just, like, buying records, it would have been hard to have a, the same education. I think there's a, multiple generations of kids who grew up listening to, you know, punk music and rock music, but also rap music, you know? I think there's a lot of people who, especially in this era, you know, their tastes are quite eclectic, and, you know, the music I make, I'm trying to just kind of reflect that in a way. Chuck D, the juice box is the shit. Five or six years ago, I toured with Public Enemy in Canada, and uh, I was just some kid. I was just amazed that I was able to go on the tour to begin with. That is the king, man. He's a buddy. He's a buddy Holly of hip hop. Wow. You know, I never would have felt like I would have deserved that. You know, if Chuck D would have just been a jerk to me, I would have totally respected that. You know what I mean? Make sure you represent the music and the energy of Juice Box. I said so. That's the beginning of like current day Juice Boxes, like touring with Public Enemy. You know, I felt like I learned a lot from that whole experience. I didn't have a band before that and you know for all these years in my 20s I wanted to articulate this thing and I was like oh yeah I need a band to do that. That's actually the missing component. After I got the band I realized the level of intensity that that could bring to stuff and I started writing songs more for the band. As I've gotten older, you know, you start to just study like people who you think are like maybe the best American performers, you know, be it Iggy Pop or James Brown. 
with Springsteen or Public Enemy, Prince, of course. One of the things that really like bonds them all is it all has this energy and it all delivers in the live arena. My name is Juice Box. I came here to fuck it up a little bit, you know what I mean? something I take really seriously, performance, you know, I mean. If you're a great performer, you're just hardwired. It doesn't matter if the show means anything or if there's a ton of people. If you've really like put your time in to become great at this, like you're just hardwired to give it your all no matter what the situation is. Things that don't go to the next level. But I'm gonna tell you that right here, right now, not only are we gonna go to that next level, but we're gonna go to the level above the next level. <laughs> I'm not playing a character, but I'm also like, you know, I have this shit inside of me that I don't know what to do with and it fucking bothers me, you know? I'm a ment I'm not s stable in some ways, you know? I try to keep it together and I've... The show is a way for me to express certain things and I don't know if there's... I haven't found another way to express certain things that are inside of me in the same way as a show and, you know, it's a really intense thing for me. It's not a, really about anything other than, okay, this is the room and this is the moment and I'm gonna, like, push this as far as I can push it. I want to come at every show, whether there's five people or 500 people, like these shows are like pure energy, pure intensity, and that's that's unwavering. I'm more interested in like reaching people and making something that can reach people. We're all kind of losers out there. We all don't know what we're doing with our life, especially now everything feels so crazy and, and I feel really crazy and you know, I go through all this internal stuff that is really hard on me and I'm sure I'm not the only person. And I, I don't know, I just kind of want to connect just on a very general level, you know. You want to fucking chuck this energy drink, Brian? Yeah, Brian. Yeah. Let's hear from motherfucking Brian. You don't got work tomorrow. Fuck this energy drink that I give you. I made an energy drink. It's like there's something absurd about it, but also it's just like a way to like interact with people. I think it's interesting if, you know, maybe I'm making more accessible music, but then on the label, I, I'm able to do these kind of conceptual projects that are a bit more weird. Hey, I'm JB. What's up? Um, I'm sorry, we're just shooting something. Do you live in this back house? Yeah. I, I used to play shows here. Oh, okay. Like 14 Punk rock years shows. Ago. I don't know if there's any way I could go. In. I don't know if you have if the basement is like. Meet me in the back. I'll let you guys know. Okay. Thank you. Wow. I mean, Jesus. I just have like memories of having my mind blown down here as a teenager. And there's like a couple stickers, a couple band stickers still here. Yeah. I mean, this is it. You know, no doubt. I mean, there used to be. It was just like covered with graffiti. Kind of wild to be down here. Honestly. Shit hits you in a different way when you're a kid, and you know, most people can kind of like move past that, but for whatever reason, I haven't been able to do that. Yeah, being down here, you know, you realize, oh yeah, I'm a fucking dumbass, and this is a lifelong thing, <laughs> you know. Through music, I have been able to change my life, and I've had reasons to change. I feel like I'm finally just figuring out how to do this and not have it totally suck, you know? You know, if I didn't feel this project developing, I wouldn't still do it. Music has been the through line of my whole life because it provides some sort of hope for me.